Notion doesn't have triggers natively in the app for web hooks, meaning that automations can't be triggered whenever there is a specific change in a database in Notion. So Notion's triggers are polling based, but there is a workaround that you might use to trigger automations manually, instantaneously, directly from your Notion pages or databases. And this is by using web hooks in any automation tools. In this particular case and video, we are looking at how web hooks can be set up in Make, in Zapier, in Any10, and in pipe dream these are automation software i'm just showing them to give you options uh, but they are all fundamentally the same thing that is web book based triggers of automations and to show you what i mean i can show you an example that is here i have a notion page that is part of a database that is called project list it is called test project and let's say this database contains projects that are linked to deals as you can see here there is a deal and also to companies so it might be a project database used by an agency to work with their clients or by a freelancer so as a way to facilitate the work, let's say that whenever the status of a project is set to complete, I as a user want to generate an invoice quickly directly from here instead of having to go into Stripe and manually create that invoice. So to do that, I can set up a webhook like this where I can click this link that is essentially a URL here. I have the response accepted. That can also be customized. And then you can see that the automation started and created an invoice in the related invoices database. So now as a user, I can open this invoice and I can see the date of the invoice, the amount, currency, I'm going to select USD, for example, line item descriptions, and I can adjust the amount, adjust the date if needed. And once I make the adjustments, then I can trigger an, an additional webhook that is create now that would create the invoice in Stripe for me to review. So if I click it again here, that's another webhook that will trigger another automation in one of those tools. And then here, once the automation is completely run, I will find the URL of the Stripe invoice that was created here so that I can open that invoice this will take me to stripe and i can see this invoice is in draft it's built to the correct client that was the same as in notion and if i want i can edit draft here change anything that i need if anything i can decide if to send the email or not include the tax id and once that is done i can send the invoice to the client either manually or directly here from the email invoice to customer setting so that's an idea of a workflow just an example that you can achieve by triggering automations instantaneously through any notion database property or any Notion page or any other tool out there. So it doesn't apply just to any tool because webhooks are just URL. And in the next part of this video, I'm going to break down how to create webhooks in Make, Zapier, Any10, and Pipe Dream, and then how you can add that webhook URL to a Notion database, also including URL parameters, if you like. What usually happens when you use any of the native modules currently available or you use the Notion API, the trigger of your automations is polling based meaning that it checks every number of minutes the Notion database that you're looking for, and then it gets the updates or new pages or the page content or whatever you need to process in your API-based automation. So in Make, for example, when you add the Notion module and you select Watch Database Items, that's what it does. It is a constant check at a specified frequency that in Make you can set here. In Zapier, it is automated, although you can also customize it in more advanced plans and the same for any 10 and Padre. And then once the change in data is detected, then it processes the next steps in the automation. So this is an okay way. Of course, it is uh, one of the ways that APIs work, in particular when it comes to triggers. At the same time, it can be resource intensive, especially if you use one of these tools. For example, you use Make, and you have a very low frequency of runs, and you have a polling-based trigger. Now that trigger is gonna check for updates or new items very frequently and it will consume operations that over time can end up. And in addition, some data might be missed if you have limits in the number of pages to process. So there are some limitations in the polling based way of doing things. And the other way that API triggers work is through webhooks. And some apps support webhooks natively, meaning that you can trigger a specific automation whenever there is a specific change detected in the app that you can define. For example, this is true for Slack or for Stripe. So these APIs contain webhooks that are available for you to trigger automatically. But in Notion, webhooks are currently not available. And that's why this workaround allows you to have a bit more control manually in the way you trigger automations. And at the same time, it consumes fewer resources. But one possible downside, although I don't think that's necessarily a downside, is that you need to trigger the webhook manually. So you need to have a URL that you click and that click 
will trigger the automation. So to set up the webhook and achieve something similar as I showed you in the first part of the video, let's go through each platform. So in Make, you can select Plus in a new scenario, and then there is the Custom Webhook module that you can select here. And in here, you can create a webhook. You can name it, for example, Invoice Webhook. You can save, and then it will get this URL here that is from the make.com domain. You can copy this address to the clipboard, add it to the target page or database page that you want to have, and then send a first request to determine the data structure. This is the next step that I'm going to show you. But let's see on the other apps how it works as well. So in Zapier, you can select a trigger here in a new Zap, and one of those triggers is webhooks by Zapier. You do need a pro plan to have this option, but once you have a pro plan, then you can select webhooks by Zapier, and you can select the event catch a hook, meaning it catches the request whenever you trigger that URL, when you click that URL, you can catch the hook, that is the response is not parsed. So the response is usually in JSON. And if you catch the hook row, it is not parsed. So this might be useful for some technical implementations, but most of the times the catch hook will be the best choice. And then retrieve poll is where you retrieve poll that URL. And this is very seldom in my experience. So most of the times, specifically for this use case that we are looking at, triggering a automation from motion, we want to catch hook and that will be enough. So when we do that, we then continue and we don't need to pick a child key. A child key is if your response body has specific keys, you can select which specific key to pick from the response. But most of the times we don't need this. So I'm going to continue and then test. To test it out, Zapier will give you this webhook URL which you can copy and then you will add to your Notion database, Notion page or any other tool out there. In NA10, same thing, we're going to add a new step. And in here, you can see that when you add the first step, you already have some common triggers. So you can trigger the workflow on a schedule or you can do on webhook call, which is what we want in this case. So when you do on webhook call, you can see NA10 is a bit different because it allows you to have a test URL and a production URL. So Eventually, once you've tested the automation fully and made sure that it works properly, you will use the production URL in your Notion database or page where you want to trigger the automation from. But in the testing stage, you will use the test URL and you will select the HTTP measure method, which oftentimes will be post because you want to post data to that URL. The path is the path in the URL here appended after webhook. There is this unique identifier. There is the path that you can also customize in any turn as you can see there. Then if you require authentication, you can set that as well. So you can see there are some additional, more advanced steps in any that allows you to customize how the webhook works a bit better. If you have a technical knowledge on these things, then any can be a good tool for you because you can customize things better. And then you can respond immediately or on other options there. And finally, in Pipedream, you can add a trigger and this trigger will be new HTTP webhook requests. So when we set this up here, you can set the event data, just full HTTP request. That's okay. It gets the headers, it gets the body. If you only want the body of the request, you can get the body or you can get the request raw without any formatting. Then the HTTP response of the request here, you can customize it as well. You can also return a custom response from your workflow. For example, you have a workflow that then opens a URL. You can return a static URL where once the response is accepted, the user gets routed on a specific web page, for example. You can set the domains here if you have a pro plan and then save it, continue. This will get you the URL, which you can then copy and add to your target app, Notion database or Notion page in this example. So in the next step and the final step of this video, we're looking at now how we can add this webhook. I'm just going to do one example from these ones that we have and how to add that webhook to a Notion database in a pretty way as if making it look like a button and then also passing URL parameters to that URL so that in your automation flow, whatever tool you are using, you can process data sequentially and do all the steps that you need to achieve the automation you desire. For example, in the module, there is the webhook, which I'm going to copy and then go to a project database in Notion. And in this project database, I want to add a trigger to that webhook. So I'm going to create a new property here and we'll make it of without a type. And I will call it trigger webhook. And we'll then add the formula using the link function. So the link function, as you can see, takes two arguments, text, that is the test displayed to the user and the URL, the URL that will be opened when that link is clicked. So in this case, I'm going to do link trigger now is the text that I want and then a comma, quotation marks. I'm going to paste the URL there. This is the webhook URL and uh, 
I also want to append the page ID into this URL so that in the next step of the automation, I can retrieve the page, the project in this case, hence getting all the properties and then do all the other computations and steps that I need based on those. So to do that, I will append a quotation mark and then the parameter that I want. So I'm going to call it ID equals, and then I will call, I will close the quotation marks and then I will do plus so that I append another string with this URL. And then I will do ID, close parenthesis, open parenthesis, close parenthesis. And the ID is the ID of the Notion page. So each Notion page has a unique ID and the ID function in the Notion formula editor gives you the ID of that page. Then I'm going to close the parenthesis and you can see here the preview of the text for the first page. It says trigger now. There is a URL which I can see down below there. There is the ID appended to the end of it. You can see here the type is text. That's okay. Then I will do done. This will populate the different pages in this database. And now if I trigger now, this should say accepted. That's because I haven't customized the response at all. I'm not going to do this in this video, but it is customizable. Then you can redirect to a page, for example, whatever you want to do. And now I'm back in make and you can see the data structure was successfully determined. So we'll do OK. And you can see here now if I add an additional step, you can see the ID parameter was determined. So I can map it to the following modules as I like. And be aware that you can append as many parameters as you want to the URL. So if you have many Notion properties, you can append as many as you like. Now, if you did this in Zapier, the same process would apply. So I will copy the Remembook URL. I will do test trigger, go to Notion. I will leave it as it is. I will just replace this URL with the Zapier URL. I will still append the ID, for example. I will do done and then trigger. This will give me a response that says success. So if I go back to Zapier, I will do test trigger again. And you can see the test was successful. I get request number A. And there is a query string ID that is successfully passed to the webhook, which is what we want. And the same exact process works for any 10 and for pipe chain. I'm not going to show them right here, but it is the same exact thing. Now, the nice thing about this is that when you have a formula with the link function, you can then also set if statements on this link function. For example, in the invoice workflow that I showed you at the beginning of this video, I have an additional um, property in the database that is a checkbox that is called invoiced. And that checkbox will only be checked when the invoice has been generated by the automation. So it acts as a control so that then in the webhook formula that I have to trigger the creation of the invoice, I can set an if statement that says, for example, if I can also use ifs that takes the argument and then the value. I say if priority equals high, then trigger now, else empty. And you will see that now I can only trigger the automation by clicking the webhook only on those pages where the priority is high, whereas the other ones are going to be empty. That's a good way to add checks into the system. And if I change the status of something, then I can trigger that now. I can also add additional conditions. I can then add end statement to the if argument, to the if condition. I can, else, I can also add or statements to the condition. So this is very customizable. And finally, another thing to keep in mind is that you can append multiple parameters to the URL, as I said, and uh, to do that, you will need to use the plus. So that's the easiest way to do that using the plus and then appending additional parameters. So here, for example, I can do end priority equals and then close the quotation marks plus priority. And you will see now when I hover over this, you can see down below at the bottom left corner that there is also a priority parameter that is equal to high in this case because it takes the priority from that page dynamically. As you can see here, that is a property token. And that concludes the overview of triggering webhooks and automations in general manually from any Notion database specifically. But be aware that because a webhook is essentially a URL, you can trigger it from whatever you need. Also from a Notion page, you can add the URL inside the Notion page and then trigger that automation from there. The only thing is that if you add a webhook URL on a Notion page, you can't pass dynamic URL parameters because there is no variable that we can set on the body of a page in Notion as of July 2024. And that's it for now. Let me know what you think in the comments or if you have questions about some specific aspects of webhooks versus pawning automations. Thanks for watching for now and see you in the next one.